Hey everybody, in this video we're going to go through a full high level overview breaking down everything that went into building this shot using Unreal Engine 5.5's motion design tools. I'm going to go ahead and mute the audio in our sequencer here so that we'll be able to scrub through without any distracting sound effects. And I'll just point out at this moment that uh, the playback sequence here is one of two. I have the default sequence that is created when we make a brand new motion design level. I just renamed it as layout and uh, that is just no animation whatsoever. It's just kind of everything that's in the scene. But then I created a demo sequence that went ahead and performed all of the animations. And as that uh, moves through our timeline, we're able to see all of that animation. Now at the end of this video, I will provide a link to, so that you can download the project file for this as well as access over an hour of free instructional video material that goes through every single step of creating this scene as well as digging into some of the motion design tools that are important to note uh, whether they were ending up in the final shot or not but for this video we're just going to do a high level overview and look at all the various features that were employed in creating this final shot so let's take a look here at the opening we have a cloning system set up and that is right here in our motion design outliner. This cloner group has a cloner in it which contains two different shape objects and then there's an effector that creates the animation for this cloning group. Design of course is that we start out with a fully transparent scene. This could be played out over top some other video feed and initially there would be no hint of this animation happening but then as the effector in this cloner group moves out of view so at the beginning of the shot it's in view right at the center of the screen but then it moves out of the way and as it leaves it's twisting these clones as well as allowing them to scale up into their final position which essentially interlocks and covers the entire frame very much like a stinger and from there we close these doors bring in a backdrop wall and then reveal some logos and text. So for the cloning system itself, it's a pretty straightforward setup. The regular polygon tool was used to create these hexagons. So if I go into my motion design mode, you can see that we have rectangles, ellipsis, and in this case, I used the regular polygon. That polygon has six sides. And also within the operator stack, I went ahead and applied a little bit of extrude to it and beveled it so that the edges would catch a little bit lower of light while they turned. Now there's a second regular polygon that's actually a duplicate of the first and the main difference here is that the second one doesn't have as much of an extrude and also it has a little bit larger of a size in terms of X and Y. So here this regular polygon is a hundred units X and Y this one is 102, 102, and that's what allows it to protrude a little bit around here. Note that both of the extrudes that are modifiers here in the operator stack are set up as symmetrical. So as this extrusion is applied, and I can actually adjust this here, you'll see that it, the shape moves in both directions. We get some interesting effects and results with that. So I could actually leave this new extrude value in place and let the video play out and we get a, a similar result. But I'm gonna set this back to uh, 16. I think it was something like that initially. Uh, again, the extrusion isn't important for the interlocking. That's more of the X and Y. But by having this extruded to 16 and having the smaller one extruded to only uh, about 3.5, we get this kind of Oreo cookie look where the smaller shape is just making a rim around the larger shape. Now, of course, the materials are different on each of these. With this regular polygon, I used a automotive material that is a carbon fiber material. And for the inner polygon. I just used a standard color here, I think. Nope, I used Material Designer. So if I hit Edit with Material Designer, you can see that it's just an emissive color. And that color value has a green and blue value that are well above one. So we're actually emitting light off the uh, exposed surface of this shape. 
So that's how that polygon is created. And then, of course, that's within a cloner that's set up for a honeycomb arrangement. So we get this kind of interlacing of the objects within the result. And finally, we have the effector, which is creating the animation for us. It's a spherical shaped effector that starts the scene in the center of our view. And what you can see is that this is set up for a scale of 0 0.001 in offset mode. So basically, every single clone that's within the inner radius of this effector is going to be reduced in scale by uh, 100. It's going to be actually 1,000th of its original size, which basically makes it invisible. But then as the animation plays out, this effector has location keyframes that move it out of the view. And we have a fall off by virtue of this outer radius being much larger than the inner radius. And so as that effector exits the view, the clones are now moving into their original position before they were shrunk and also, by the way, twisted in Z rotation uh, by the effector. So as that effector leaves, these clones move back to their original positions created by the cloner. And by the time we hit this A marker in our scene, the effector has almost completely exited the frame and we just have a, what appears to be a solid surface even though it's actually formed from lots of clones. Now, I had mentioned that we used the automotive materials. So if I go to my content, I have an assets folder here, and there is an automotive materials folder, and that's just from Fab. So if you go into Fab, I believe those are completely free and available. So you can search for automotive. And maybe I can spell automotive correctly. And there's automotive materials. I believe those are available free. I'm also using twin motion materials. So you can type in twin motion and hit enter. And there's the twin motion materials pack. And finally, I am also using assets from the eSports sample. Now, this asset pack actually needs to be generated as a fresh project from the Epic launcher and then moving the assets. But again, I'm going to provide a link at the end of this video that will allow you to download this project. And all the assets are located in that. In terms of the eSports sample, I'm using a little platform floor, which is actually underneath the field of view here, a pair of doors that are what we have slamming shut here, and let's see what else is in here. Oh, uh, just our backdrop wall as well as the Epic logo, and finally, just a few girders. It's a single girder shape, and they're just used as a little bit of extra set dressing to a uh, to provide some visual interest at the top of the frame here once the uh, doors open up. So those are the various assets. Again, animation-wise, this is pretty straightforward. The doors are in place, so here they are. Uh, they're just out of frame, and their keyframes are such that they stay out of view until the effector has almost completely exited. Then we start animating the closure of those doors. So I can expand these, and you can see where the keyframes are set up. And there's a little bit of bounce so that they slam shut and they bounce open and then close again. We keep them shut for a little bit and then animate them back open so then we have our new backdrop and can start bringing in our graphics and our text. So in terms of this background, there is a uh, cube shape here. So this is just a cube shape from the 3D shapes in motion design. And there is a, in this version, I used a material designer material. I think in the um, instructional materials in the uh, linked page, this was actually getting the um, carbon fiber material again. But for this demo, I refined it a little bit and used a material designer material. So with that cube selected, I can click on edit with material designer. And I used only two channels, the base color, which is a gray, and then roughness. And that roughness is a texture that is a hexagon shape. So let's see if we can find that in the content browser and double click to open that up. So most of it is transparent, but then we have this alpha solid of uh, this hexagon kind of a pattern to it. So with that in roughness, what's happening is our uh, base roughness is a light gray, which makes it uh, soft reflections where we don't have sharp reflections, they're, they're rather blurred. 
But then above that, I'm using the hexagon texture as an alpha channel for a black value. And if a black value in roughness is shiny and has sharp reflections, and that's how we get these clear reflections on this hexagon pattern. And so it gives us this sense of a complex material, even though all we're really using is a base color of a uh, rather dark gray, and then uh, the roughness is giving us that little bit of extra variation here. That is how that is set up. And this is present throughout the entire shot, but in Sequencer, what's happened with this cube is that there is uh, animation applied to the mesh size. So here, prior to the doors closing, the mesh size in Y, meaning left to right, is set to zero. So we don't see that shape at all. And then once the doors are closed, we go ahead and animate from zero up to um, 888 apparently, and that gives us the width of this cube here in view. And finally, we have our graphics and text. Now, this top logo here started out its existence as an SVG file. So if I go to content and I think demo, nope. Let's go to assets. Here we go. We have an SVG file. So this was just a SVG file on disk that was dragged into the content folder. And that created this graphic that is the Unreal Engine, the main Unreal Engine logo itself. And that's been extruded. So if I select that, we can see in the details that there is a little bit of fills extrude applied. So it has a little bit of three dimensionality. And really, that was all that was done in terms of its shape. It's animated by virtue of the shape's offset value that's in the details of an SVG actor. When the uh, SVG is dragged into a level, it looks something like this. There we go. And we can uh, offset the various individual shapes by using the shape's offset. So if I just animate this, you can see how these different shapes come in. And so if I delete this new copy, what happened here is that this starts out out of view behind the camera and animates into frames so that the first shape comes in and then the remainder of the shapes are animated through the fills extrude. So if we take a look at this while it's selected, what you'll see is that there's a shapes offset and at the beginning that's set to 40, but there's also a transform. So with the location, we have a negative X value that puts it behind the camera. We first animate that into view, and there's our U, and once that is in place, we hold position on the logo actor itself, but the shape's offset then takes over to animate all of the remaining shapes into view. Similar, we have this text object here. However, instead of a shapes offset, we have a text 3D character transform. And so location progress is used for that. So with then selected, we can expand that. And we can use this location progress to animate those letters into view. And then one other animation is that after we have the big uh, sound effect hit, there is a animation applied to the kerning value. So by default, we started out the animation set up with this kerning value of 5.6. And then after the big sound effect, that gets animated so that we still have a bit of motion in frame as the camera pushes in for the sound effect to fade out. Then our last little effect is this. Epic Games logo, that is a static mesh that came in from the uh, eSports sample. So that's right there. And that's just uh, animated with location keyframes to, to bring it into view. So that is basically it for this animation. So if you're interested in downloading this project file and going through the step-by-step -step tutorials, uh, you can go to the Unreal Engine dev community. And I'll have a direct link to the page. But if you're on the learning page for Unreal Engine, you can just enter motion design into the filter here and look for Introduction to Motion Design posted by Epic Games. And in there, you'll find that uh, here is the download for the full project file and two videos that provide over an hour of instruction that help you walk through building this scene step by step from scratch. 
Now, I prepared this originally for Unreal Fest that was in Seattle in 2024. So while we're at it, I should mention that uh, this video is coming out here towards the end of April in 2025, and we're just a little over a month away from Unreal Fest Orlando. And I will be presenting an Introduction to Motion Design Lab at the Unreal Fest event in Orlando in June. Uh, so if you want to find that, again, you can go to the agenda page and uh, search for motion design there. Make sure you go to David's talk on the Unreal Engine 5.6 updates to motion design tools. That'll be on Tuesday, June 3rd. And then the lab that I'm presenting is on Wednesday, June 4th. So uh, when signups are open for that, go ahead and sign up for that if you are going to Unreal Fest. So that's everything for now. I hope this was of use and this gets you started on your path in using the motion design tools in Unreal Engine 5.5. Till next time, have fun.